on this episode of Still Loading, Vegeta. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of the Still Loading Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Koval, and today it is the first episode of Mario Month. Unlike last year, which I only got to do two episodes in Mario Month because I, you know, I just became a dad, so I was trying to make sure I set aside time new during those first couple months adjusting. But this year, it's full, it's it's full steam. We're going all four weeks of March. It is Mario Month, and to kick off Mario Month. I have with me here, he is a host of GDQ. He is a speedrunner. He is a full-time, are you a Twitch partner or are you a Twitch affiliate partner? Twitch partner. He is a Twitch partner. Uh, Spike Vegeta is on the podcast today. Spike, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, my friend? Doing very well. Doing very well. I'm excited to talk about this topic today because... For those who've listened to the show for a while, I did Mario. I did an episode on Mario Odyssey a year or two. Uh, phew, like it's probably been three. I, I keep forgetting that game came out in twenty seventeen. The game's been out for like four years now. It's almost, almost coming up five. On five. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I did an episode on it in like twenty eighteen. I want to oh, say damn, so. It's damn. it's been a minute. So it's it's been a while, but. We're going to talk about the game, of course. We're going to talk about some of the things we like and dislike, but we're going to focus on it. Instead of just kind of talking about the game and talking about some of its development history and stuff, we're going to focus on a different aspect of it. Spike here is a speedrunner of Super Mario Odyssey. So we're going to talk about the speedrun tech and its and the routing and all the different things that speedrunners do to break this game in half and and uh, make it it's, make it their bitches. <laughs> Uh no, but uh, but make it theirs, you know, like oh, pretty own it. So to kick things off though, before we dive into that spike, I want to ask you, how did you get into speedrunning? For, for the listeners. Yeah, I've been into speedrunning for over 15 years now. I remember wow. I, I felt like I was almost into it when I was a kid. I always told people that uh we didn't have a ton of money growing up. Uh, so we had enough time to own three video games. I had Super Mario <laughs> World, Donkey Kong Country, and Mega Man X. And that's all that I explains had. why you like D- you run DKC, and you usually yeah. do the commentary for DKC a lot. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to be doing commentary. I don't know when necessarily a recording date is for this, but uh, I love doing commentary for the DKC series. Like they're great speed runs, and obviously they're games that are just near and dear to my heart. But uh, yeah, all of those games, I remember sitting there being like, okay, I, I've got to keep playing through these. That's all I had. So we had a uh, above our little entertainment system where I played my Super Nintendo games as a kid. We had a clock and I was just, I lapped myself effectively. I was doing my first ever, unbeknownst to me, I was doing speed running. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, okay, I beat Donkey Kong Country in 50 minutes. Can I beat it in less than 50 minutes? Oh, I beat it in 45 minutes today. Okay, that's really sick. Whatever, yada, yada, yada. And then I came to find out in 2004 when I was in high school, I found an issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly. Oh, that's a throwback. And, yeah, a super throwback. I know, like gaming publications, that thing. Anyway, I had <laughs> I so many. I have Nintendo Power, EGM, GameSpot, all these different magazines. And uh, I found an issue of EGM where they had a one-page little throwaway article that was just talking about speed running and mm-hmm. it was about a website called speed demos archive that had like 11 total games on it. If you go check that website today, it's actually still active. It's got thousands of games on it and slowly but surely the speed run community has expanded. It's branched off and made like the games done quick events speed runs live. It is a part of Twitch culture everywhere. Um, and thousands of if there is a video game out there it probably has a speed for speed run there's a speed run for i am bread (laughs) yes yes oh there is yeah that thing's got a brimming community that has appeared like three times at uh in gdq GDQ yeah over the years yeah 
It's uh, very cool. But yeah, so I've uh, I've speed run a bunch of different games over the years. I've speed ran, uh, you know, the DKC series, 3D Mario's, uh, Mega Man games, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, uh, tons of different games. One of those being Super Mario Odyssey we're going to be talking about today. And uh, I just have a fascination for the art of watching someone completely master a game and knowing this having this routing mind for the best way to go from the very start of the game with no advantages to the very end as fast as they can. I think it's very cool. I I agree with you, man. I wish it's one of the things I wish I could do more. I, I was telling you off mic, I speed run Sledstorm. I really should practice it. It's really the only thing standing in my way of actually getting involved in the community. It's just mm-hmm. I have to find time to do it. Yeah. But I, I always tweet about Games Done Quick and I post on Instagram about GDQ because it's like it's one of it's that event. The fact that I also love that it's a week long thing. Yeah, I, I know it's exhausting for you guys working a full week like that, but it's it it almost feels like like it, it's this comforting blanket where it's like, oh, I get to go home and GDQ's on again. Like it's yeah. still going. It's this not it's this ever breathing uh, like almost like entity. It's really it's awesome. And I watching I think the game that really hooked me on speed runs, like watching them specifically was Mario 64. Oh, yeah. like that game is just so insanely fun to watch. It just I love watching people break it. And along those lines watching people like watching you and other people run super mario odyssey just the tech that you guys use to not i don't know how much you break the game i haven't seen a lot of glitches but how you like the the movement is so much fun to watch oh, yeah. in this game like i think that's my favorite part about watching the mario odyssey speed runs uh so before we get into that i have one more question for you just for my listeners to continue to get to know you a bit better how did you get involved with gdq I got involved with GDQ, I remember back uh, pretty early on in the event's lifespan. Uh, It started back in January of uh, 2010. They had the original classic games done quick where they did all retro games. Mm -hmm. And slowly but surely it expanded to awesome games done quick where they just had all sorts of games there and summer games done quick. The first summer games done quick in Salt Lake City, Utah at Speedrunner Essentia, her house. Uh, I went to it. First time I'd ever gotten on a plane by myself. I remember back Oh, wow. Then. And uh, yeah, it was a whole other journey for me to go play video games with a bunch of other nerds. And uh, I got to run Rayman 2. That was another series I didn't even mention I had run in the past. But uh, Rayman 2 and Kingdom Hearts 2, both for that inaugural event. And, uh, you know, I really tried to bring to it a sense of commentary. I've always thought commentary is something that is essential for a lot of people to appreciate 100%. all sorts of speed runs. You do have your games. Like you said, Super Mario 64. You can watch that and probably just be like, that's cool. They're doing triple jumps and long jumps all over the place. And like he's wahooing everywhere. And there's a lot of just kinetic energy <laughs> yeah. to that game. But I think the vast majority of speed games are infinitely more interesting if you have really solid commentary that explains every step of the way. This is why we're doing these different things. And like, even if it's just from the standpoint of normally when you play the game casually, you do it like this. But then we're going to do it this other way and it's going to completely skip over this thing to give someone that casual appreciation for what's going on in the game. And so I tried to bring that and I feel like it kind of got the ball ball rolling. Uh, More and more people were doing really, really good commentary for their runs. And it makes it to where I think, especially this past GDQ, which has been a thing for years now, but especially this past one, you could turn on any run and say, wow, I've never played a game like Pumpkin Jack, but I guarantee you anybody listening out there, go watch that Pumpkin Jack run. You will love it. You will appreciate it. Even though I guarantee you 99% of your listeners have never heard of that game. I never heard of it. I loved it. It really goes to show because I know, um, like even think about we're bringing back to Mario 64, right? One of the first things that speedrunners do in that game to bypass the opening cinematic is they have to jump, basically skip a trigger on the bridge and they have to kind of jump on a certain side of the bridge leading into the castle. And that looks so silly if they do it perfectly because it's like why are they doing like it's like okay that's strange but you know maybe that's just the fastest route like the the layman would think like okay that's just the fastest route into the castle but once they explain like well normally there's a cutscene here and by doing this we just skip the trigger entirely and now we don't have to watch it and it saves however many seconds uh and it's stuff like that where that's super important to someone like me who doesn't speed run because it makes it 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 also i think what's so interesting about speed running is that it's almost 
it's a cool way to peer into the minds of the game designers and the game developers. You get to kind of see what they were thinking when they were programming something or using specific art assets or whatnot. And like, and we're also kind of seeing like how far you can take the physics of a game world, like thinking like uh, one of my personal favorite series, one that I've actually considered speed running because I like it so much, the Ratchet and Clank games. Oh, yeah. Those are so fun to watch because a lot of times, like I remember in the first one, they'll use like the clone glove, which will then push Ratchet past the physical boundaries and take him outside the the bounds of the level and then they could walk around and stuff it's it's shit like that it's just super fascinating so for those who have not watched a games done quick event one what's wrong with you but two <laughs> uh two you can watch all of them on the youtube archives and they're the next big one is summer games to click but there's a flames fatales thing or flames Fat- uh i can't speak isn't there a, like a smaller one coming up yeah flame fatales they've actually flame been fatales. doing these uh, a couple times a year and uh it's really to highlight uh female gamers in the mm-hmm. speedrunning community i uh, can show off a lot of, a lot of what they do i actually need to check what the the starting date for that is i don't I want everyone to not misinterpret i'm actually not like gdq staff by any means i okay. do help out with running like interviews and stuff um but that's uh, that actually yeah. surprises me considering how much you do for the event like that's you just that's a big volunteer thing you do there oh a lot of people think i like i'm, I'm like i'm the higher up at like gdq just because like i'm a voice for them yeah but a lot of times the voices were not the ones at all unfortunately you know, the event is running sunday february 27th through march so yeah make sure actually uh, oh this episode will be out the day after it ends oh son of a (laughs) bitch (laughs) fuck um well uh you just missed it listeners i apologize um (laughs) it'll the the summer games to quick is usually in july usually mid-july to august um so that is the next big one the full week event but this uh, this flame this frost fatale sorry is a full week as well so oh but it's not 24 7 from what i can yeah tell. yeah they take it's the, pretty the damn close time. i it's, will which i will say this i i I, I'm like you. I super appreciate the GDQs are on 24 seven. You can turn on any time of the day and you're good to go. But from a event organizer standpoint, it's so nice to run 12 hour days because you can only ever get so far behind schedule. It's like, okay, if you went three hours over schedule that day, the stream cuts and it's coming back up at eight. So unless you get 12 hours behind schedule, you can keep it there. So that is a little bit nice for people wanting to stay somewhat on schedule. Okay. Yeah. Cause now I'm looking at, I'm like, what do you, I'm like, I'm confused. Cause now it's like, it looks like they might be streaming the whole time anyway. Cause there's a, it's literally just scheduled sleep on yeah, the event. Yeah, it says yeah. camp, <laughs> camping showcase tent. Then there's a slumber party on the living room floor for Tuesday. Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> there's a 12 hour sleep, 100. percent Oh, it's all just okay. I, I would think it would be funny if they actually kept the camera on for like specific things, like keep right, the stream right. going. 100 um, <laughs> percent bed skip, kitchen table. <laughs> oh, get wrecked! What? Oh man, that's the. They're, some people have some real fun putting these guys. I don't know if together. I like. I don't like this one. Sleep cuddle puddle glitchless couch cuddle puddle is a that's that's a euphemism for something. I don't know if they knew what it was. Uh, we maybe want to involve some glitches there. Yeah, I don't know. If yeah, I don't know if they wanted category. to use that. I mean, maybe they did. That's fine. I just want <laughs> <laughs> cuddle puddle. <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, yeah, so check out games done quick. So let's uh dive into Mario Odyssey in earnest yeah. and what like i'm assuming you're just a big mario fan because i i see you speed run a lot of stuff is that what made you want to take up mario odyssey for a speed running game golly i there's a lot of different factors that can draw anybody to a speed game why they run a you know people run all sorts of platformers rpgs fps's and all for completely different reasons i uh would say two of the biggest factors why i like speed running is when routing it is very very fun and when movement in the game is very very fun mario odyssey simultaneously does both of those things super super well it has one of the coolest movement engines in the entirety of just gaming 
Uh, I think it's up there with the Ratchet and Clank's other 3D Marios, uh, the Jack and Daxters for just moving Mario around is extremely fun. They gave him, I feel like the game was almost a love letter to all 3D Marios in the past. Uh, I would say all Marios. Oh yeah, all Marios in general. You even have stuff like, because all of his different movements he has in it is they were the best in different games like the spin mm-hmm. jump is so good in super mario sunshine uh backflips are so powerful and you get so much speed from them instantly in the galaxy games super mario 64 your triple jumps are so much fun to do your long jumps uh in even going back like you say to 2d mario super mario brothers 3 having that p speed where his hands are out to the side and he just has that extra running animation mm-hmm. to him that he gets to have All of that stuff, they took it, they threw it in a big melting pot and said, here's Cappy, here's Super Mario Odyssey, move around Mario, it's super, super fun. So all of that's cool, love to to get to do all of this interesting movement where I've always described super cool speedrunning as, especially in movement, why Mario 64 and Odyssey and all these ratchet and clangings and everything are so cool. Every different option you have, a long jump, a triple jump, a roll cancel, rolling in general, whatever it is, diving. Every option you have at a different point is optimal. It's not just, I long jump everywhere. I roll everywhere. And it's just one kind of linear movement that gets you through the game fast, but it's maybe not super uh, exciting and different at all times. Mario Odyssey, it never stops going between the 15 different movement options you have depending on just little minute differences in the terrain you're crossing into the object you're trying to achieve the enemy you're trying to defeat very very cool stuff and the other part is the routing aspect so super mario odyssey is a massive massive video game with 880 moons in the game so i really feel like 2017 was a year nintendo's like let's just add collectibles to every big game to every, yes you know breath of the wild with the korok seeds and you have mario oh. odyssey with the sh- with the moons the, not the shines that's galaxy that's oh sunshine oh my i God. know the moons the shines the stars they're all over the place yeah 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 no it's so they threw so many in there which From a routing standpoint, I love that. There are different categories in the game. And the category that I really pioneered the routing for back when the game came out was darker side. It is the final kingdom in the game. It's like your perfect run, your your champion's road, your ultimate challenge at the end of Mario Odyssey. You need 500 of the 880 moons to get in there. So I went through and I timed out and did a lot of movement theory crafting about, okay, how would you get each of these different moons? Like, how would you collect them very quickly? How far off of a beaten path would I have to get to get that moon and then get back on said beaten path and eventually time out? What is the fastest 500 moons that we can collect? There's so many other factors you have to consider of, all right, Uh, to get this moon i need to get this prerequisite story moon over here Mm -hmm. so when is it worth it to get a slightly slower story moon to give me access to all these other moons yeah and so breaking down all those MacGuffin variables to where i could give an initial route that people could for literally what might be decades to come now we'll take and we'll analyze and nitpick and say this is the new optimal route like oh okay and my route is still like it's pretty up to par with what the optimal route is of the 500 moons i routed over the years maybe 20 or 30 or maybe 40 at the most have been routed out so i enjoyed getting to give it that good baseline and so many other people have like just given it some eyeballs. Just refine it. That's the whole thing Absolutely. with the community. And for listeners, for those who don't know uh, routing, I think it's because something good to describe what routing actually is. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Sure. But uh, Spike, maybe if I if I say something that you think you could be clarified, just feel free to jump in. But Absolutely. routing pretty much is just finding the fastest and most efficient way from point A to point B throughout the game. In in layman's terms, it's you know. Uh, and what you were saying with Mario Odyssey, what makes specifically darker side of the moon so fun is that you have 800 options to route. It's, yeah. it's like you, you have so many different ways to pull stuff in and pull stuff out. And like, um, I think one of my favorite aspects of when I see people running this game is using the paintings. So in Mario Odyssey, oh, there yeah. are paintings that will 
take you basically fast travel from one from one kingdom to the other without it. It doesn't even feel like that long of a loading screen. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's faster than what the actual like getting into your ship and flying to the next kingdom is. Uh, and obviously that cuts out a lot of the menu navigation, which is nice too. But going through that, it'd be like, all right, well, if I get these five moons up here and jump through the painting, I, can, I get quick access to the next like 60 over this way or what, however many uh, stuff like that. So I find that super fascinating. So you actually mapped out at least for the, the, the largest cat, the longest uh, biggest category in the game, like well, next to hundred percent, I guess hundred percent would be the longest. Yeah, hundred percent in all moons would be like almost <laughs> triple the length of it. Actually, there's Holy so fuck. much shit to collect in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh I, my God. I, I would say darker side. And I'm not saying this to like toot my own horn. I no, I didn't the, take it that way. Like in all moons, you know, you have to get all the moons. Not to say there isn't routing to it, but like mm-hmm. at the very least, you have like a simpler baseline to go off of. Those middling categories, like a darker side, is the most. I would say complicated to route initially because there are so many factors to consider for like, when is one thing worth it or not? Um, So yeah, I I definitely think it was a monster of a routing project to do. How long did it take you to route it out? I would, if I had to guess, I would say it was in the ballpark of a full month of streams of just going through and being like, all right, chat, we are here in the sand kingdom. There are 89 moons here. We are going to time out every single one of them because again, you can't just be like, Oh, how far long did it take me to go over and get that moon? You got to time how long it takes you to get back away from the moon back onto whatever path you are. What is the main path even? Uh, that I'm going to be staying on because at a certain point, the game is just an open sandbox. Yeah. Like, so you had to think of like, how are, what are like groups of moons then go pick up? It's worth it to go over to the Oasis and Sand Kingdom because there's like four pretty fast moons that collectively maybe take a minute to get. So 15 seconds per moon, whatever that is, you know, whatever yeah. the cutoff point is, that's what that is. Um, so you have to consider those sorts of things. You also have to just be like, okay, if I'm getting this moon over in the Oasis, what is at least a baseline for fast movement to get to it? So people are going to be for years and years to come being like trying to figure out little bits of finding of a, uh, what is a faster way, a more efficient way to get Mario moved over to that moon and then moved from that moon to the next moon and that moon to the next moon, and that moon to the next moon. Uh, yeah, it's uh it was it was a big it was big dummy <laughs> thick but you know it was good it was fun i that's the, all that matters right like i i feel like the reason i think i like doing i tried my hand at sledstorm because i don't have to worry so much about routing in sure. that nearly as much because it's a linear racing game when you have those big open world games routing is like 90 percent of the run just about it seems like um maybe not that maybe not with mario odyssey i think you're talking about how great the mario movement feels and i feel like that's always been such a design choice for the entire series like miyamoto has always really prioritized like if this doesn't feel good to control then we shouldn't continue on with the game like if you don't like how the base movement of mario feels i mean uh, i remember reading from super mario 64 they spent months like the a huge portion of the game's development was dedicated to just mario's movement and it it shows i mean i know mario 64 has dated uh, is a little bit more dated now especially with the camera movements and whatnot compared to what we're used to but mario galaxy just like i uh, it, i just love how the game feels i think I remember playing when I, when the game first came out and I was playing through it, I really felt like this was like the best homage to all of the Mario games. I know we mentioned that before, but you know, they bring back Pauline from the donkey, the original donkey Kong game. Like you don't, Uh that's a good callback. That's a throwback (laughs) that most people wouldn't really recognize unless you played the original donkey Kong, you know, Mm uh, stuff like that. So I guess, um, what, when what is your favorite uh category to run and what what are the most popular categories for this game oh gosh well for me it is definitely darker side i like i guess i've always been this way in speedrunning where i almost love the middling categories the most not necessarily a hundred percent because i find most games 
not everything in it is super enjoyable to do. It is very cool. There are a lot of people out there who are big time completionists and they love the hundred percent categories and whatnot. Um, but for me, I'm like, I like shaving off that like bottom 20, 30% of, of the game, even if there's definitely some cool stuff that goes with it. And I don't like doing the minimum either. Sometimes I feel like I'm not seeing enough of the game. So to me, if you think of Super Mario 64 as like, it's got that 70 star category where you see a lot of the stars, but you're never doing a lot of like the slower hundred coin stars or anything. To me, darker side is almost percentage wise what that is for Super Mario Odyssey. Okay. I get to, yeah, we have to go through the entire base game, but then all of that is set up to then go into the post game where we're going into all these kingdoms and in about six, seven minutes collecting like, 40 moons in the sand kingdom then going into the wooded kingdom and getting another like 40 moons in six or seven minutes and then off to the next one the next one the next one it's one because i don't have to do the 377 slowest moons in the game yeah the pace always keeps up and you're always next moon to the next moon to the next moon to the next moon um so darker side was definitely my baby when the game came out i was very proud to route it and it's always been the category that i go back to i feel like a lot of times in speed running i sort of pick a category for a game and i stick to it i don't generally run second categories a lot i'd rather just run a different game and just kind of always build that speed running repertoire and have a new appreciation for it um but i do think other categories that are great i think all moons is great I think it is cool to watch people who have. So how many hours is that? Uh, I believe the world record is now. It just went under seven hours and 20 minutes. That's so it impressive. Is well over double the length of like a darker side, which is yeah. crazy to think about. Just those extra 377 moons add so much time. There's so much That's more like nuts. the purple coins, the regional coins they need to be collecting. They have to route jumping 10,000 times, throwing Cappy 5,000 times. In order Is that to get something to get moons. something? Yeah, but you get moons for doing all this stuff. Which Holy is honestly shit. what like slows down the category a lot, honestly. So they got like jump farms built in and everything. Watching runners perfectly balance, having to get all the things in the game, not just a select number. Very, very cool. And by far the most popular category in the game, and a really good one in, in its own right, is any percent. Uh, yeah. You've got the 124 best moons in the game, the fastest moons. Um, you know, a specific amount from each kingdom and uh, just reach the credits, uh, get to the end of the moon kingdom. And uh, the world record for that, I believe, is 57 minutes and some odd seconds. Should wow. be by Tyrone, um, who is Italian, which I love the fact that the Sumario Odyssey world record holder is Italian. It's that's great. kind of serendipitous, that's yeah. kind of great. It's beautiful. Um, so yeah, that is definitely the most popular category. I it is probably the single category in all of speedrunning that has the most times mm -hmm. when odyssey came out came out back in 2017 it was like a modern mario 64 came out everybody you said you got into speedrunning through mario 64 everybody got into speedrunning from watching mario 64 so all of a sudden there was this new 3d mario game that came out in the twitch era in the games done quick multi-million dollar era and all of a sudden, people could say, I can be at the grassroots. I can be at ground zero when Super Mario Odyssey comes out and be one of the speedrunners for it. And literally everybody and their dogs was running that game in yeah. the first six months it was out. Thousands of people have times on the Super Mario Odyssey any percent leaderboard. It, and the game really, uh, it, I mean, it lends itself to it. I think the, the we'll use this to transition into the next part of the, the topic, um, the tech, movement tech. That's the yeah. other half of the equation besides routing. Um, and the movement tech for this game is fascinating to watch. It feels like I remember watching you and other runners do this where it's like you turn one jump into what's like four jumps because you just keep, you know, you throw your hat and you bounce off it and then you ricochet off a wall, throw the hat again, and you just kind of keep on going over and over and over and stuff like that. So what are some of the movement tech that's in the game and what are and then kind of what's your favorite to pull off? Oh my gosh, there's so much cool tech in this game. And like, here's the great thing about it is it's got 
tech, which I generally consider like stuff where you're not, it's not like intended by the dev really to be able to do this stuff. But even the stuff that is intended within the course of the game, I think is very, very cool. Um, the momentum you get off of rolling and then popping out of it uh, and going into the, like that sort of P speed where you get to run for a little bit, where you can all of a sudden take that roll speed and then start applying it to say triple jumps that you need to do if you need to gain a lot of height. Uh, cap return jumps where if you throw Cappy and then you dive to him, once Cappy comes back, you get this sort of vaulted jump in the air that gives you the same height roughly as about a double jump. And all of a sudden you can chain that into more jumps all over the place. There are so many jumps that, yeah, like <laughs> I know you just did a double take right there. Like what you can do that. And that's just a basic, they just threw that in because they thought it felt good and it flowed really well. So that's, that's beautiful. Like you were saying the cat bounces, you can get through the mm -hmm. entire game casually without ever doing a cat bounce, but you can do kind of the classic one is get between two higher up like buildings or something like in a sand kingdom. I give you, using that for my examples but it's honestly where i tell people to go if i want to teach them how to do this stuff do a okay. long jump throw cappy dive on to cappy because he'll stay out there for a little bit for you throw cappy again after you bounce off of it and you can dive again and you can gain all this distance to go over these longer gaps and feel like whoa okay all of a sudden the game felt feels so much more sandboxy. All of a sudden, I can go do whatever I want with this. There is a limit. You have to land after you bounce off of Cappy. You can't bounce off him again. But we have ways of kind of getting around that and still gaining tons of height, tons of distance, kicking off of a wall, throwing Cappy into the wall to snap us to the wall and then kick off of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So many, so many cool strats. Now, beyond that, you got lots of cool movement tech. You got roll cancels. So rolling in this game turns Mario basically into Sonic the Hedgehog all of a sudden. <laughs> he goes he really roll, fucking roll, fast. Roll, he goes really super, super fucking fast. But maybe you don't always want to go in a straight line. So you have the movement tech roll canceling. Where all of a okay. sudden, if you throw out Cappy as you're rolling somewhere, you can turn on a dime and keep all the speed you had in that roll into now a P speed running uh, wow running okay speed, and just keep going at the same speed you were at in the uh uh in the rolling around so now you can carry that into triple jumps and whatnot you can make any direction possible with that kind of top speed now to get to top speed you got to go into your rolling however there's a little bit of a wind up to that you got to roll skip a couple times before you're really going at that top speed however if you do buffered spin pound you can do that. <laughs> what? It's built into the game that if you jump and you ground pound and then you press Y to start rolling, you will immediately be at that top speed. The problem is the amount of time it takes to jump, slowly ground pound, and then go, you're losing all the time that you would save from doing it. However, if you do a buffered spin pound where if you're coming out of a load zone, you just finished talking to an NPC and you can buffer two full rotations of the left joystick on your pro controller, your joy cons, whatever it is, yeah. Mario will already be in his full spin jump animation, which you can then jump and immediately frame one ground pound and then start rolling. And you're at that top speed immediately. So the wow, more you okay. watch top runners, you'll realize they have found out how to get buffered spin pounds literally everywhere in the game. You're going to go through your joy cons or your pro controller sticks a lot faster because of it. Because yeah, literally just looking at a darker side run, a three hour run of that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Will you be doing these buffered spin? Packs? I didn't even think about how much damage it would be doing to your controllers. That is a very good oh, point. Like routine. how often do your controllers break? Golly. I, I probably get a new pro controller about once a year. And Mario Odyssey is one of many different games I speed run all the time. Uh, people who I want to say like pro controllers do have a lot more life to it. I I'm a baby. I like to get several. I don't want to make, make people feel like, Oh, you shouldn't run this game. Like you're going to run through controllers. That's no, always frames that you can give up and not necessarily go for, or just be okay with, Hey, well, if, if the time comes, I need to get a new controller. 
Um, that's but I do still hear nuts to think about. More of a problem. But, but that's yeah. still nuts to think about how like it's it's almost like what the uh, you know what super what the Mario Party games did to N sixty four controllers, where it just fucking destroyed the controllers oh, and God. your the palms of your hand. Yes, uh, <laughs> but I was going to ask for that for the spin. Does it? Is there any? Can you like if you're playing with the Joy-Con? Would it be? Are you able to get up that top speed quicker by if you? Because I believe you can shake the Joy-Con while you're in the crouch mode to get him to roll. So could you like shake and then hit Y and shake and then hit Y? So you kind of like are like basically get hitting it faster than you could actually hit the button because you're 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 using the motion plus the the button optimally you just want to be shaking your controller the entire time so i say (laughs) i say press y i'll generally everyone's got their own preference i'll press y to start a roll but from there and people at home can't see this i'm just you're doing this with the controller shaking it for an hour, two hours, three hours, eight hours, however long the, the speed run is. I mean, your arms, man, I'm sure oh, your anybody cat. significant others is going to be very happy for some massages with that. Oh, just... yeah. Let's go get yeah, <laughs> nice and firm all of a sudden. Firm hands. I always, I always have to make sure I have a I have a Fitbit. I always have to make sure I take it off <laughs> before I do a run. So I your, to... <laughs> your steps go through the roof. Uh, all of a sudden, I feel all buzz, buzz. I'm like, I just hit 10,000 steps. I haven't. <laughs> fil- oh, shit. <laughs> I've been That's playing funny. Odyssey for seven hours. This is why all of a sudden. Okay, I should yeah. tell my I should just tell my wife that she's always trying to. She wears a Fitbit as well. And uh, uh, I'm sure she would love to be like, oh, how convenient. Every now and then her, <laughs> mom, her mom and her family would do like one of those um there's competitions with Fitbit where it's like, you know, who can get the most amount of steps sure. in a week. So like, unless you're like, and you know, obviously someone could just go like this, but that'd be boring just to sit all day long, just smacking your Fitbit around to cheat right. the steps out of, out of an arbitrary bullshit competition in the first yeah, place. Not right. even like money's on the line, but I think that'd be funny if I like, yo, just go speed run Mario Odyssey and you're going to get your Mario steps Odyssey, in half yeah, an hour. Your steps will fly, believe it or not. <laughs> Courtney, how did you how did you get like fifty thousand steps in the first half of the day? I was like, I, I, we, I went for a walk. I don't know what to tell jacked. you. What can I say? Yes, oh, uh, that's funny. Um, but I mean, and that is, I guess, if we're on the topic of tech, here's mm-hmm. the number one, almost like life hack. I'll give everybody listening. If you ever want, if you're ever watching Mario Odyssey speedrunning, and you're like, how are they doing that? They're probably shaking the controller. (laughs) Every single capture in this game, obviously like a big mechanic of Mario Odyssey, you can capture a bullet bill, you can capture Goombas, you can capture Paragoombas, uh, Piranha Plants, all this stuff. You can capture literally a piece of meat. Uh, (laughs) If they're ever like doing something where like they're moving faster, they're probably shaking the controller. And don't think that's just a Joy-Con thing. Pro controllers can do it too. You're shaking the controller the entire time to go. And anyone who had uh, shake weights, uh, this was they were prepared oh, for this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna uh, be the speed run for you. I know, right? Uh, what would you say? Are there any, is there any tech involving some of these creatures that you take over? Like you said, bullet bills. Uh, like you said, I forget what they're called, but the little worm things that stretch out. Oh, yeah, the tropical in. wigglers. Yeah, the, tr- yeah, yeah, the wigglers say. there. Are there is there any tech involving those, or is it mostly just straight up Mario and Cappy tech? Yeah, so I mean, there's a couple of different instances I can think of there. There, it's actually a piece of tech I've never learned. I probably should learn. It would help in a handful of spots around the run. But uh, with bullet bills, you can actually, once again, if you shake the controller, they have this jolt forward. They they boost forward really really fast. There's a way to sort of lock bullet bills into going that speed the whole time Um, okay i wish i could explain it better than that but i've actually never learned that tech but if you ever watch someone at really high levels take a bullet bill super far across the map that's what they're doing that's how they're getting going really really fast goombas believe it or not have super super cool tech where if they do a spin jump on curved like sloped surfaces all of a sudden they boost really far off of the slope and then they can keep doing diagonal spin jumps to keep that momentum going and cross really large gaps all of a sudden that kind of brings us into another piece of tech that just mario and cappy have in addition to 
anything they might capture. Like you'll see in the very first kingdom, Cap Kingdom, when you capture a frog, you'll see almost similar to like you'll see in first person shooters where they do bunny hopping everywhere. That's okay. kind of the big piece of tech. They'll sort of jump and then fall at the camera at a diagonal angle. And for whatever reason, they gain mad speed going down to the <laughs> ground and go a lot further each time. So you'll That's see so them. That's so interesting. Yeah. So if you ever watch like a speed run of Mario Odyssey and you're like, why are they like jumping with the frog and then turning the camera and then kind of going down at an angle whenever they have to fall a decent distance, they're doing that as much as possible so they can gain way more distance and make certain tricks possible at all. That's insane. That's like, um, that's like in like, uh, like just, just thinking of tech that looks super strange to the to the non-informed to the uninformed uh, non-informed the uninformed that's the oh, real yeah. world non-informed is not a thing uh, <laughs> to the uninformed uh, it's like watching su- the Super Metroid runs where Samus will like right. you know uh, go like waggle her her arm yeah, up arm and down pumping. up and d- yeah arm pumping we just pump her arm we're going to pump you up yeah do pump she, her, wow. <laughs> we, you got to pump you. She she arm pumps because it it, it propels her forward like an extra couple of frames every yeah. cycle. So like runners will just do that the entire run just so that way they can get that extra little bit of speed. Mm. I don't know how much I've, I've I've heard people like I guess maybe through like task runs or something like it adds like a couple or removes a couple seconds or minutes. I don't know how how long it yeah. does. But I bet like, you it's, it's a, in the seconds. It's every time you arm pump, either aim up or down as you're running it pushes her forward an extra pixel and over the course of maybe like an 80 percent run you're maybe saving like five seconds i'm throwing that number out there i don't know i know it's i don't mean this in a negative connotation it's insignificant but when you're speed running you're trying to save every possible frame you can yeah and well and especially on a game that's been optimized as much as that like it's the same thing with like uh the original super mario brothers and like you know games that are super popular that have been run by a shitload of people yeah. those are the games that are the hardest to get to the top of the boards because oh, yeah. people have optimized those runs so much where you have to do that that arm waggle with Samus just to shave off that 0.5 seconds that it's going to take for you to beat the person above you on the on the leaderboard it's 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 crazy like if if this was a new game that no that was just starting out and people were just learning the run no one would be arm waggling because it wouldn't make a fucking difference at that point right. because everyone's trying to get everyone's still learning the run and routing the run and learning all the tech but then it's it you only get that level of tech after people have already made a couple runs and you find the different you find the new strategies that incorporate all that stuff like I mean, it's the same thing. I love watching uh, Mitch Flower Power with his Mario 3 runs. I remember he did a thing where he had like a bracket tournament where it was like a bunch of different and it was just a bunch of runners and he would, instead of who could get to point A to point B the fastest, he would give them points, right? Based off of like uh, different tech that they could or different like swag they can swag, Yeah, swag means that are like, it saves time, but it's really risky to take. Um, and so it's stuff like that where it's like, yeah, these would be outrageously difficult to do. These are outrageously difficult to do, but if you can do them, you're going to, you're going to inch ahead by that one second that you need to get to the next level on the leaderboards. It's nuts. Um, on a nod speed run related note, I want to, I was curious, um, what are some of your favorite kingdoms in this game? Like every, the game is broken up into a bunch of different kingdoms, but, uh, and they're all different themes. You know, like you mentioned sand kingdom, uh, you have the wooden kingdom, you have the lake kingdom, you have the cascade kingdom. I like cascade a lot. Actually, it's one of the first ones, but I just like the visuals of it. Uh, Metro Kingdom because I love New Donk City is is really fun. There, I feel like how a can lot you of not like that. a kingdom called New Donk City? Like, I know, that's right? Great, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you you find out later. Uh, this is a secret secret origins of Mario. It's just a butt holding it up. New Donk. <laughs> what, <laughs> <No>. a <badonk. laughs> what, what a but Donk! What a but Donk City. Uh, <laughs> that's an awful joke. I apologize. <laughs> Please keep it in. I'll be so mad. Oh no, I'm keeping it. I'm I, when I say awful, I mean it's a bad joke. Like it yeah, shouldn't sure. be funny, but it made me laugh (laughs) and that's the most important thing i don't care about the listeners no uh but no what are some of your favorite kingdoms and then conversely what are some of your favorite maybe not conversely but additionally what are some of your favorite 
speed running kingdoms, like kingdoms that you have the most fun in during a run. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's good. I was going to have to say like, there's some where like, I think casually I enjoy the kingdom a lot and somewhere like I love getting to these kingdoms in the speed run uh, in terms of just casually, what are kingdoms that I loved? Sand kingdom is hard to beat. It really is. Like it feels so open. There's just literally this massive desert to go around in and try to find all of the little goodies that the game has tucked away for you. It's like the first open area kingdom of the game too. Yeah, like it, it is. The first That's truly true. open area. Everything feels pretty linear up to that point, even though you can go back and those kingdoms open up a little bit. Sand is just like, whoa, all right, I need 16 moons before I can leave here. Let's just start looking around. Maybe, maybe I go do the story. Maybe I just look around the town a bunch and then go out to the ruins and see what it's gotten. Yeah, I love Sand Kingdom. Um, I, I'm like you, I love Cascade Kingdom because it's one of my favorite tracks, like in video games, the Cascade music. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to, pl- I'm going to see if I can find a remix of that for the end of the episode. I always find like oh, video game, yeah. re- you ever, you ever listen to Game Chops? You ever heard yes, of the Game yes, Chops? Yes. Yeah, I love. We use I, that for like, like break music for our streams and whatnot. It's, it's all good to go. Yep. Yeah. The, the Creative Commons. Love it love that shit um so i might try to find one of theirs for for this but anyway yeah so you were saying you like cascade King just for the 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 route of it or yeah no no the music you said the music oh, for the oh music yeah for the music and also just like the cure the pure aesthetic of just walking and being like holy shit this is a tyrannosaurus rex can i capture i can capture this oh my god that is like the best set like it is so hard especially you know you're you're uh out of context, that would have been a bad sentence. Um, <laughs> but it is so difficult as someone who is like like you and myself who have been playing games for years and decades. And like you almost, not in necessarily a mean way, but you become a little jaded and things don't necessarily wow you. Like you, yeah. you don't get that sense of awe and wonder as like you did when you were a kid. And that moment where it's like, can i do this holy shit i can yeah that's hard to find now because we just intuitively you know video game logic you know you know like oh of course i could do this there's so many times i've said this before in other episodes i'll be playing a game in front of my wife and my wife is not a gamer she's not into geek culture Uh, it's it's it's, we're very much an opposite to track couple right and i'll be walking down a hallway i look down i'll look down at the end of a hallway not walk the whole way down but look down and be like all right there's nothing there i'm gonna turn around yeah and she's like how do you know there's nothing there i'm like because i know that there's nothing there like yeah and you just kind of know when it's a shitty hallway that doesn't exactly. have a goodie at the end of it yeah and every once in a while i'm wrong of course you're going to be wrong you're not going to get it right 100 percent of the time but by and large you can just look at it and be like no there's fucking there's nothing down there yeah um <laughs> and the older you get, the harder it is to be like, well, is there something down there? Or, oh, can I do this? Like, you just, you intuitively know too much. And in this game, when you see that T-Rex, you're like, what the fuck is that doing there? And all of a sudden, you throw your hat at it, and you're like, oh my god, I can, I can eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> Running around rampaging this, like, super, Best like, feeling. all of a sudden, are does Yoshi and this <laughs> actual Tyrannosaurus Rex do they live in the same universe? And apparently they do. Yeah, it's oh, you're right. I forgot because you get Yoshi in the Mushroom Kingdom at the end of the yep, game. Yep, you do. I, I know you think forgot like, about... oh, is this the new Yoshi? And I like, no, they they just live in the same oh, universe. I, I think real... it's great. I yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yoshi's a dinosaur, but so is this thing. But they're <laughs> yeah. nothing alike. Nothing. He's a cute little green dude with a long oh, tongue, and then funny. you got T-Rex. Yeah. So that's I love really that. Funny. Um, I also casually, I really liked Bowser's Kingdom. It's kind of like the last big hurrah before the end of the game. Uh, mm-hmm. Climbing up to Bowser and doing stuff with like the little bird, the little, little Tweety bird, little Pokemon. Yeah, bones. yeah. Um, I thought that was really, really fun. They were one of my favorite captures in the game. Climbing up the walls there, super, super cool. And then taking out the Mecha Brutal with the help of those Pokios. Super, super sick. I got to say also, I love the name Brutal because not yeah. like everything brutal because they are brutal. They're villains. So you're getting that yeah. kind of like negative connotation with it. You have it's but it's spelled Brood, B-R-O-O-D-A-L-S mm-hmm. or Brutals. Uh, so they're brooding or that brood also kind of makes it kind of like a, almost like a, I don't like a hillbilly type of thing. I don't know. Yep, why that yep, yep. 
and they kind of get that vibe because they're like this weird i don't think nintendo meant this but if since they're hillbilly and it kinda, i think of like a brood thing is like i don't know they seem like a southern hick family and they are a sure. family the brutals are a family so yep. it's kind of like it fits with that vibe i was going to make a joke about the incestuous brute like hick hillbilly thing but i don't think nintendo's going for that <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> i, I hope that. not but yeah. I, I don't think so like oh they were so wholesome <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I would. I do, was not expecting this part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the game was great until that weird sex scene. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I've never it's seen two one. rabbits go at it. <laughs> well, whatever they are, what are that's they? Actually? Where the saying came from? They like are rabbits. they rabbits? What are they? What are the? <laughs> what are the brutals? No, they're rabbits. Okay, I remember. I remember correctly. Yeah, they're the, I yeah, I it's like a double or even like a triple meeting there going on they with the brutal. Kind of remind me. We were talking off mic about Donkey. Kong. Oh no, we were mentioning on mic about Donkey Kong. Uh, they kind of remind me of all the different Kongs from DK sixty four. Sure, yeah. All of a sudden, bit, right? the DK crew has showed up <laughs> with brutals. Yeah, they got their own rap song and everything. Absolutely, I can see that. I feel like Nintendo could spin that off into a game, make a brutals game. Oh sure, that would be. I mean, kind there's of fun, already actually. the Rabbids series, which they cross over with for the. That's Mario where it comes from. Rabbit's they're they're yeah. they're the they're the parents of all the rabbits. They you are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> That's really God. funny. Um, any other any other uh, favorite kingdoms though? I cut you off though before we went down that weird rabbit hole. <laughs> no, the <laughs> no literal pun intended rabbit with hole. the rabbit hole. No, yeah. So if those are my favorite kingdoms. Casually, I think from a speedrunning standpoint, I absolutely love speedruns of Lost Kingdom. Watch someone who's really really good at the any percent route of Lost Kingdom, where they get there, and normally the game wants this whole sequence where Cappy's going to get captured, and then you have to kind of chase him down. Mm-hmm. You have to defeat this bird to get Cappy back and save him and everything. And it wastes all this time. But speedrunners found out multiple different ways to completely skip over the trigger. Do do this big triple jump vault off of a tree to get around wow. the other side of the mountain, get around, distract the bird that was going to capture Cappy, all while collecting these 10 moons in what looks like when a speedrunner is super good. It is like, Dan, 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 they got the moon. Two seconds later, Dan, 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 Dan. Dan. And it's like every couple of seconds, they're picking up another moon to where within about two minutes, they get 10 moons and they are in and out of there off all these death defying jumps over all the poop, per, the poop, the purple Kool-Aid everywhere <laughs> that they don't want the to fall aid. into and die. The poop gate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think that is a super, super uh, fun level for the speed run. I think Metro Kingdom watching someone do like a nighttime climb mm-hmm. up inside like when you first get to the kingdom you have if you watch a top runner have to climb up inside city hall uh uh, just it's absolutely mesmerizing holy shit how like they do all these like quick bounces like throw cappy quickly dive off of it change direction dive into something else do a little wall kick I just I can't describe it as well. It is just to watch it. Go check it out. And uh, I got a big, big, big soft spot in my heart in my heart for uh, the Luncheon Kingdom. I just think it's got a lot of really, really cool climb sections, sub areas that you have to go into where you have to like control the forks and you flick mm-hmm. really fast, like jump around the entire area. Uh, yeah, so those are just a couple of the kingdoms, but like. The whole game ends up being very fun for speedrunning. Even the ones where you think like, oh, the moons there aren't super interesting. Yeah, but moving Mario from moon 336 to moon 337 is fun every single time. I in Luncheon Kingdom specifically, I think is one of the most uh, is super imaginative. Like I just really love the visuals of it. I think the thing I'm most impressed with with the with Odyssey in general is just the amount of different ways like cappy is such an amazing power up in the game he's uh, he's obviously essential like you have him throughout the entirety of the game so he's not really a power up he's just a base ability for the most part but like the way that they found different ways to find fun things to do with different objects or creatures Uh or it's just once again like their nintendo's game design is just i don't I can't describe, I can't think of another game where it's like when you're playing it, it's just like, it's just fun. Like it, like it, yeah. it oozes so much fun that it's like palpable. It's very, it's hard to describe. Apparently, according to the literal translation of this, I'm reading off the wiki, 
uh, Lungeon Kingdom actually directly translates to Cooking Country, which huh. I kind of like That's actually cool. a lot. I, I really like that name. Um, for me, some of my favorite kingdoms, I would have to say, actually, I don't like the Ruined Kingdom at all. I, I'm, I it's find disappointing. That really There's not it, a lot going on in it. Yeah, not my favorite. I like Metro Kingdom. We already mentioned the Badonka Donk City, New Donk yep. City, um, and you also have what was it, Lost Kingdom? No, you, mm-hmm. you mentioned Lost Kingdom before. Um, I really like Wooded Kingdom as well. Just oh, yeah. I, I like woods and I like I like yep. like trees and shit like that. And Wooded Kingdom was really fun because it kind of had that industrial like industrial revolution meets like uh, urban decay with like plants growing over. I, is that the is that the other is that the kingdom that the T Rex comes back in? Because there's it shows up yeah. in two different ones. I think you... it's the Wooded Kingdom that it shows up in again. Yeah, he's Mm -hmm. actually in a couple of kingdoms. He's actually in a little sub area in Metro Kingdom as well. But yes, he is also in Wooded Kingdom. If you fall down into the dreaded deep woods. Yes, Uh, there's there's one down there and he's not friendly. He's he's not just sleeping You can capture him. No, he's walking around and he's got a little hat on. So you have to knock his hat off and then you can capture him and move around. But until then, he will terrorize you. It is very, very scary. This thing literally 500 times Mario's size uh, is quite hungry when it sees a little Italian plumber running around. There's a, I did an episode a couple of years ago on my top 10 scariest moments in non horror games. Oh God. Uh, this could, this could, uh, this wasn't out when I did that, but this could be on there. It could be an honorable mention. I did have a Mario one, the the piano from Super Mario oh, 64. God. Scares the shit out of you the first yeah. time every, like, uh, even if you know it's there, it's still just like, all right, when am I going to trigger this thing? And you inch a little bit forward, and then it lunges at you and it freaks yeah. you the hell out. Uh, yeah, the, the T Rex down there. And we, it's a bit of a callback to something we were talking about off mic. You said it's the deep woods. Once again, sounds like something out of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah, so, I would say so. I mean, there's the literal the deep jungle in from Hearts from the first game, yeah, from the yeah the Tarzan world. So yeah, that definitely lines up with it quite a bit, and even aesthetic wise, for sure. This kind of deep, dark, dank area that you've ended up the dank in jungle. The yeah, dank the you dank. go in, it's just filled with dank memes. The dank um, jungle. Uh, we were t- for listeners. We were talking off mic about how the music in the f- the first kingdom, Cap Kingdom, kind of sounds like something straight out of Kingdom Hearts to an extent. Like it, maybe like one of the castles or something like that. I, I think mm-hmm. of like the um what that yeah is that is that actually uh, I think it might be from the first game with uh oh my god Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's, no, that's exactly, yeah, from Wonderland. No, I can definitely hear what you're talking about right there, that Cap, Cap Kingdom, I always thought, gave almost like a little bit of like like an opening kind of mysterious to like a Disney movie, a Disney cartoon. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I definitely see that lining up with, yeah, like Alice in Wonderland, Wonderland from uh, from Kingdom Hearts 1. I can, definitely, I can hear that for sure. I need to play Kingdom Hearts again, man. I love that game. They're series. great games, man. I actually beat... I've done episodes on the first two games, and I actually... I've... It, I beat uh, Birth by Sleep for the first time like a year ago, oh, like two years ago. I, actually, it was my, before my daughter was born, so it was over a year ago. That's for sure. Um, I, and I've been meaning to go back, and I actually was playing... Um, the one on the DS, not recoded, uh, the 358 over two. Yeah, uh, I've been meaning to play that one. That one, I it it, I that series, dude. I know you're a huge fan of it, but I always whenever want to, I love the one meme where it's like describe the Kingdom Hearts series in like in a sentence. It's like oh God. Kingdom Hearts three is the ninth game in the series. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's I, all you need to know. It's all you need to know. But it, all right. Any case, back to um, back to <laughs> the, the Super Mario Odyssey. Yes. Um, I don't actually have too much else that I wanted to talk about in terms of the speed run tech. I just figured, is there any other topics that you that about the game that you really like that you wanted to dive into, or any other speed run specific uh, things you want to dive into? Because only things in my head were routing and tech. I feel like it, that's uh, that's all I really know. So if there's anything else you think it would be interesting to go into, feel free. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, just two quick topics I'll throw out about it is that the game also does have its own fair share of just like kind of mo- mind blowing skips and clips and tricks to it. I didn't even glitches. Holy fuck! Yeah, skips, cl- glitches, tricks. Yeah, you go on. Sorry, I completely. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't even think about that. No, 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 no. Yeah. So people watching it, all of a sudden, like you're sitting there and you're figuring something out. And then all of a sudden they just clip through a wall. And a lot of the vast majority of these clips are pretty goddamn difficult to do. And it's, you look for very specific visual cues on the wall that you have to like, maybe like do a little bit of a setup where maybe you do like a backflip into a ground pound into a roll that you roll cancel. So I mentioned earlier how like you can at some point throw Cappy in your roll and all of a sudden you can like change your directions and whatnot. Here you can get right up against the wall and it's not to ch- to change directions it's just to kind of pop out of that animation which puts you in a state where if you do it correctly and there's usually about a frame or so that you can work with that you can gain enough speed coming out of the roll that you clip through a wall and so we do it in places all over all the different categories Mm -hmm. in this game uh maybe it's sometimes it's to you go into snow kingdom and instead of doing the four different side rooms to get down to the bound bowl so you can bring peace to the kingdom we just clip down and go straight down to the end of the kingdom you got oh wow okay you got in Sand Kingdom where they want you to do these two different story moves that are kind of slow and then eventually make your your way over to the inverted pyramid and this you know this door opens up. If you go through and you try to just kind of long jump or like push your way into the wall, Cappy will say, you can't brute force it like that. We said bullshit in the speedrun community. <laughs> you call We're gonna, bluff. If you play it in English, yeah, he'll actually say, oh, nope, that's not going to work, or you can't brute force it. He says something to that effect. And it's great where then all of a sudden we do a ground pound into a roll, into a roll cancel, and clip through the face and go straight into the pyramid without having to do the slow moons beforehand. Um, there are those sorts of, skl- of, uh, of skips and clips all over this run depending on what category you're watching so i always find it's nice like at the end of the day the i always describe what is the meat and potatoes of a speed run sometimes Mm. it's the it's the skips and the tricks and everything sometimes it's just the movement and i would say mario odyssey it is just the movement and it keeps that at the forefront of everything but it's nice to spice it up a little bit with saying there's also like cool clips and stuff that we do like here and there in the run just make you go whoa that was okay how do you do that yeah there are a couple that i could tell people are like relatively achievable i think anybody could do them um there are also a lot in the run that people have had to practice many 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 times in order to actually get it down so that that's yep. insane. I, I actually, this brings up a topic I totally forgot to bring up as well. What language should you run this in if you're trying to get the optimal time? Uh, for those who don't know, most times when people when speedrunners run a game, they usually run in Japanese, but sometimes there's other languages that are faster because Japanese it uses less symbols overall to convey yep. the same amount of information that we do in english so since there's less symbols that have to be shown on screen that's less time you have to cycle through text boxes or less time it takes text boxes to type out the text if you have to wait or even if you can rush it it's still it shaves off that time so for mario odyssey spike what is the language that they you should run in for optimal speed I believe optimally in all categories, because people have done timings of this for so many different languages. I believe the optimal time is actually simplified Chinese, which I have to go check exactly where it is. But if you go in, you don't have to own a simplified Chinese version of the game. Yeah. All versions come with all these different languages. That's so pretty handy. Sure, pretty sure if you go into the language options in mario odyssey it's like the third one from the bottom i want to say I, I i could recheck that maybe you can dub in here exactly which one it is but it's like the third one from the bottom and uh yeah that gives you the minimum amount of characters to just save maybe over the course of an any percent run 10 or 12 seconds over the course of longer categories mm-hmm. 30 or more seconds at the end of the day, I think if you want to just run on English, I think anybody can. But I will say this is one of those games where 
it doesn't get any harder playing it on the faster languages. Even if you're like, I can't speak simplified Chinese. I can't either. It doesn't matter. For <laughs> the most just, part, you just you memorize, memorize the inputs. Click, yeah, click the top option for the most part on, you know, like if you need to talk to the Sphinx or something. Uh, mm-hmm. For the most part, it's something too big. If you go to like all moons, that's probably the breaking point where there is one moon that Pauline in New Donka Donk City gives you. <laughs> where she quizzes you and it's random questions. So you kind of have to memorize the characters there. Otherwise you can just run it in English, not worry about it, be able to read it. But I uh, if you there could change are it lots on the fly. of good guides. <laughs> what? I wonder if you could change it on the fly or would that take too much time? It would take too much time to flip it back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be one of those. They do. So that kind of naturally actually leads me into the other thing. I was just going to bring about Super Mario Odyssey as a speed run before we move on. It's just... This is such an accessible speed game. It is as complicated or chill as you want it to be. If you don't want to be like shaking your controller all the time and like just doing somewhat slower strats, like that's totally fine. I think that's the case with a lot of speed runs. But yeah, if you go in, you say, okay, these are the 20 moons I need to get in Metro Kingdom in any percent to get out of here. Some of these moons are a little too hard for me. There are these, there are literally 60 other moons all over that kingdom that you could say, I'm going to get some of those instead because it's a little more comforting for me as a runner. If you ever want to know any of these routes, these backup routes, these beginner routes or anything, you can go to the Super Mario Odyssey speedrunning discord. You can find that through speedrun.com on the Super Mario Odyssey game page there. And there are guides, there are PowerPoints that are, they love PowerPoints in the, in the Odyssey speedrunning community. There are PowerPoints you can use there to tell you exact routes, where you got to go, what you got to do. And uh, I just know so many people have gotten into this game and picked it up as their second, third, fourth, first speed run and uh, just absolutely adore it. So I big, big recommend anybody out there who's like, I want to try out speedrunning. Odyssey is a good place to start. What would be some advice you would give to prospective speedrunners, whether it's like uh, not necessarily how to get into it, but maybe advice to like stay into? Because I can tell you from my personal experience, I get way too caught up on making sure my run not necessarily is perfect, but I get way too caught up in making my run like what I consider acceptable. And that Uh before I and before I even it's one thing to submit it, but the thing is you can do a ton of runs on Twitch or whatever, and you don't have to like submit them. So my thing is like, I'll have a pretty good run and then I'll fuck up like one thing. and be like, all right, starting over when I'm still trying to learn the tech of the game. Like I'm not, it's not like I'm going for a world record. I'm just trying to learn the tech of the game, but I am so fixated on making it through without making any major mistakes that I get i get i don't know if it's anxiety or if it's just mm-hmm. um a perfectionist thing which also could be anxiety uh you know <laughs> what I mean? uh, but it's like i i i kill a run that i probably could have ended up placing like second or third and just because i fucked up a handful of times you know what i mean yeah. um so i don't know is i for, for me even though someone who doesn't do speed running pretty much at all that my advice is just to don't listen to that little voice in your head when you're doing when you're trying out a run for the first couple times. Just fucking plow through it. But I don't know. Is there anything else that you would suggest, though? Like, especially and this is for me, too, because I'm trying to get back into it. I think a lot of people don't have good reset strategy when it comes to speed running. I think a lot of people kind of get caught up in. Oh, that I messed that up. That sucked. Reset. And a lot of people end up, they do that and they only see the opening five minutes of their two hour long run yes. over and over and over yes. and over and over again. I have actually done a couple of speed run challenges over the years uh, where I've tried it with like different numbers. I think currently my goal is the 100 hour no reset challenge where however long your game is, if you do 100 hours worth of no resets, so if your game is 10 hours long, that's 10 runs. If it's an hour long, that's 100 runs, whatever it is, don't reset. Just do the run, do it in full. Keep a lot of data for yourself of like, okay, here's where I'm losing runs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Here's where I'm having big mistakes. And then stop after the run and say, okay, I just did that hour and a half long run of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, a game I've run. 
what were like 10 things that were giving me issues? Okay, let's go and stop and look at each of those and see, all right, let me work on the consistency of each of them. And then the run I do tomorrow, we'll do it again. And you'll get to work on those more and more as opposed to having an emotional attachment to why you reset your speed runs. Cause that's, I think what it is for a lot of people, they just say, oh, that's I made me. this mistake. I hate this run. Um, and I think if you just kind of tell yourself, even if you don't want to go extreme as extreme as a hundred hours, your first five, 10, 15 runs of any category, anybody out there, don't reset it. Just see the entire game and get a full perspective of what is running that game? Well, where are your problem spots at? Where are the spots that you worry about losing runs? And mm-hmm. what can you put time into to better yourself for the future? And eventually you'll just find it's a crazy concept. The more you do something, the better you get <laughs> and the more consistent what? you will become. There are so many times where like I was trying to cut the three hour, 20 minute mark of Super Mario Odyssey, darker side. And I couldn't do it for so, so long. For a long time, I was trying to cut the three and a half hour mark, 10 minutes slower than that. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And the more I did it, when I finally cut 3.30, I never got a time over 3.30 again. There was like a little bit of a mental block all of a sudden right there. I don't know what you want to call it. But I was just playing the game enough to where now I could get that time in my sleep. When I went sub 320 earlier this year, or I guess last year back in 2021, now every single time I run this game, maybe I don't PB, but I get like my second, my third, my fourth best time. And it's cool to think about, I've only done better than, yeah, this run did not PB, but I've only done better than this run once ever in a game that I have dumped well over a thousand hours into yeah yeah and you can also take a lot of appreciation out of that it doesn't have to be this very black or white just ipb or it's a shitty run don't have that mindset run the game it think to yourself why do i enjoy running this game i think not resetting will a lot of times get you to the same location in about the same amount of time for that pb you want Mm -hmm. but it might be a somewhat more enjoyable journey along the way. And at the end of the day, what I just told everyone, maybe that doesn't work for you. Always kind of mess around with like, maybe you're just mentally, I hate carrying runs that just, I know can't PB, but I will say as someone who's been speedrunning for 15 years, that has made a world of difference to me in my speedrunning endeavors. I mean, it makes sense because if you don't, if you, if you hate it that much, then you're never going to get to practice at the later stages of the game. So you're setting yourself up to fail again, because if you, if you're only going for that PB and you fuck up and so you reset, you're not practicing on the latter half of the stages. So essentially what you're doing, say it's a, let's say it's a two hour run and you are, you know, world record pace for the first hour because you are working on that towards that PB. But as soon as you hit that hour and five mark, this is stuff you have in practice. So you reset and it takes you a whole hour and five minutes to get back to that section again yeah. for you to practice the tech for that section. And what I what what's helped me is I have a, an emulator and I use save states. Oh, just, yeah. It, yeah. Just for practice things. Obviously, you don't want to... um you don't want to use that as a uh, as a, for you don't use save states for runs. That's very not a well, it's uh, it's illegal in the speed run. Community. Don't do it in a run. But uh, speedrunners use save states for everything for practice. Yeah. That's beautiful practice tools. Thank you for the advice because that, that not only for people interested in speedrunning that also helps me because now I'm like looking at these uh, sled storm leaderboards again. I'm like, uh-huh. God damn, I want I want to try to I have a I'm. I can I can shave it down to under twenty two minutes. My run. I, I Next can, time you go that. to it, it's a twenty two minute run. Do ten no reset runs and take data. Write down what your times are from each of them. Write down where your major mistakes were and just kind of get data. And after each run, go work, do IL practice or whatever for that. And just get, maybe I I would love for you to actually email me and then tell me like. Was it an enjoyable experience? Did it not work for you? I don't think this is a be-all, end-all trick yeah, to enjoying yeah. your speedrunning. But at the end of the day, you have to have fun doing it. If it's not enjoyable, it is a video game at the end of the day, even though we're doing a hobby with it. Yeah. Um, if you're not enjoying it, I would not recommend speedrunning. 
that's always what I tell people. So the speed running requires so much. Uh, it's a lot of time. It, it's a, it requires an insane amount of time to become competent at a game at that level, at a speed run speed runner level. So it's like, why would you willingly put in a thousand hours into something that you hate like that? That, that makes right. no fucking sense. You're <laughs> that it's just dumb. But all right, um, let's begin to wrap this up. Um, this has been fantastic, dude. Thank you so much for coming on. I learned a lot about the the Mario Odyssey speedrun. I hope my listeners did as well. And uh, hopefully, I mean, at the time we're recording this, I, the rest of Mario Month is actually still up in the air, which is strange, I know, to hear that in an episode. But we will see what happens. I'm working on trying to contact some other speedrunners so we can talk more about Mario game speedrunning. So, uh, yeah, Spike, thank you so much for joining me. Where can everybody find you online? Your Twitch, your social medias, what do you got for them? Yeah, oh, so- is there anything you want to promote that as well? Anything I want to promote, golly, uh, this will be coming up. Uh, Summer Games Done Quick will be happening in like five months. Check it out. I'm sure I'll be helping out in some way there, doing interviews and whatnot. Um, uh, yeah, check out just speedruns in general. Go on Twitch and check the speedrunning browse, the speedrunning tag. See what people are doing all the time there. There are speedruns of games that you never thought was a thing. Go go, just look around. See what, see what people are doing. I'm sure they'd love to have more people in their chats. Uh, and you can follow me over on twitch.tv slash Spike Vegeta. Uh, we do a lot of fun speed runs, challenge runs, casual playthroughs, and the works over on my channel. Randomizers, lots of cool stuff. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter where I like to promote uh, that channel uh, to let people know when we go live and everything. And uh, just saying some goofy shit otherwise. So yeah, Spike Vegeta. That's where I am. Go check it out. As usual, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at StillLoadingPod on all of them. If you want to email me, you can email me stillloadingcontact at gmail.com. If you want to support the show, give it a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whichever podcasting app you use. Besides it making me feel warm and fuzzy, it helps more people find the show. If you want to support the show monetarily, you can go to patreon.com slash stillloadingpod. For a dollar a month, you'll get all the episodes a few days early at a higher bit rate as well as access to a patron-exclusive Discord. And at the time this came out i did a 30 days of video games over on my instagram which was like a prompt of like you know what's your favorite game what's your favorite character what's your your most annoying character stuff like that and i did a podcast companion to it little three to five minute episodes just talking about those various prompts and that's all over for the one dollar patrons uh at the five dollar level you'll get all that the 30 days the early episodes the discord but also you will get access to two exclusive bonus episodes every month um at the time of this recording the most recent bonus episode i looked into the wild west of gaming where i talked about how atari coleco and you've actually probably already heard this because i've shouted this out before but i still think it's an interesting topic uh, but how, how atari coleco and mattel's and television all developed games and then would publish them on each other's systems which is just a very strange idea in the modern landscape um At the time this comes out, though, I probably will have another episode of my retro magazine reviews where I take an old gaming magazine and I flip through it and look at the weird shit and weird advertising in it. So patreon.com slash still loading pod. But the most important shout out out of all of that is the Bit by Bit Foundation. The Bit by Bit Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of kids receiving inpatient care in hospitals. So if you want to support them, go to bitbybitfoundation.org. At the time of this recording, the last thing I saw, and I I shouted this out on my episode with Brandon Colt, they donated two of Microsoft's accessibility controllers to a hospital for kids with physical disabilities to be able to play games. So bitbybitfoundation.org. That is it. That is the, my whole spiel. Spike, thank you so much for joining me once again. Thank you so much for having me. This was a wonderful time. Awesome podcast you got here. And uh, I'm looking forward to listening to the finished product. Thank you, my friend. And I will see you all next time. Mm-hmm.